Hi everybody, once again, I uh, wanted to take this opportunity to talk to all of you, especially those who are still studying in the university. Uh, if you're in your second year, third year or final year, I think this message is directly dedicated to you. Uh, one of the key questions or one of the key ideas that we've been sharing, as well as many other recruiters or hiring managers been talking about, is this need for soft skills. However, uh, today I'm not going to talk about soft skills because I think there's enough emphasis on it. I uh, just wanted to share a different perspective uh, as to that. So what do I want to talk about? Uh, let me just quickly highlight. Uh, I want to talk about technical skills, right? So this is the amazing thing or observation that I caught from uh, being a judge to a group of uh, professionals over the weekend. And uh, one of the observation is uh, very stalking that uh, if you are particularly in a one discipline and you're training to be a professional in that industry, there is certain fundamental requirements that you need to fulfill, right? And if you do not meet this minimum standards, hence why you don't get employed. And I, I got a feeling, I could be wrong, that most of the time when you don't get employed, uh, they don't actually say that you don't fit uh, technically, but more so it's easier to say that, you know, your soft skills are lacking and uh, one of the way is to, to pin it down on that, right? So um, while maybe true, maybe true, we all could enhance our soft skills uh, in whatever way, uh, especially we are a fresh graduate and a new entry seeker to the industry. But one perspective that I think a lot of people have not been emphasizing is that this core technical skill is a must. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you some examples, okay? So if you are studying in the field of engineering, right, uh, while soft skills are important, but more important are your technical fundamentals in engineering. For instance, whether can you uh, utilize any of the design softwares that is uh, practiced in the industry uh, to really draw uh, structures uh, or draw engineering designs. And you must be able to do that uh, because in your four years of pursuing your degree, uh, your assignments uh, should be on a daily basis, looking at how to draw and making sure that you are able to do the basic calculation for your drawing. And these days with all the software and tools out there, uh, you're supposed to be uh, back of your fingertips. So it could be said as an engineering student, uh, you should know AutoCAD as uh, by heart, just like how you know Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. It is a given. Uh, it shouldn't even be a requirement to say that whether do you know this or not, right? Uh, it is uh, almost assumed that you are. So when you come for an interview and if your interviewer decided to throw you a test very quickly within 10 to 15 minutes, create something out of the... Uh, the requirements and if you cannot do that within the 10 to 15 minutes then it shows that you lack in this particular fundamental technical skills right and of course you may argue with me to say that you know 10 15 minutes is a very short time uh you know really pressurized you know and sometimes uh, you don't work in under such intense pressure but this is where it separates between a student and becoming a professional in the industry. Uh, we are all pressured to work in a very short time, uh, trying to deliver the best result for our stakeholders, for our clients, for our bosses. So there is no excuse, so to say, that if you uh, know your stuff, you should be able to perform. So this is the one that is uh, very troubling because uh, I'm just using an engineer example. Uh, but I have other examples. For instance, uh, there was uh, many times I met uh, people in the software development world, uh, the IT world, IT professionals, and uh, they've been trying to recruit programmers or, or people to do programming and coding for their organization because they have all these software development projects. 
And one of the consistent feedback that we get from these bosses is that Malaysian uh, students or Malaysian graduates aren't very good at coding and some of them even can't do simple coding. Uh, of course, I understand there are many programming languages out there. Mastering all of them is almost impossible in your university years. But here is where I think the fundamentals understanding uh, is critical. So even having a logical mindset of writing uh, simple what if statements, uh, it is also a challenge for some of our students or for some of our graduates. And uh, when you do put on the spot and being asked, you know, to do that, uh, uh, if you don't perform again, you don't meet my fundamental requirements, right? So one last example I wanted to share was um, the exposure was uh, with a group of finance and accounting students. Uh, they were thrown a curveball to prepare a budget based on the financial records of the previous year. And uh, it is therefore expected uh, uh, as a third or final year student able to churn out the budget, hmm, uh, reading the financial statement and coming up with a budget. Uh, of course, you have access to your computers and laptops. And if you're unable to do that, <laughs> that is where Again, coming back to my earlier point that you don't meet fundamental requirements of the job. So I'm given three examples of how that technical skill it is critical uh, in your job, especially if you are in a very specialized professional field. So to do that, if you are in the second year, third year, or even final year, one of the key important things is to start interacting with the professionals in your industry and try to suss out what is the minimum requirement that you must know. I understand in university, in your four years of study, there's a lot of things to cover. And sometimes you can be overwhelmed huh, with the depth of knowledge or the width of knowledge. And then you start to question how relevant is some of these things that you do. So most of us will end up in just going through the moments uh, or motion of uh, passing our module, getting our score to improve our CGPA, but without really looking carefully of how that particular knowledge is important for our future uh, as moving forward. Of course, if all of us have a crystal ball, that will be ideal. Unfortunately, we don't. Uh, even for myself, uh, I'm, as most of you know, I'm a graduate in food science and technology. And uh, one of the key things, uh, at least 20 years ago, and it still now is, uh, but even more critical these days, uh, is of course uh, food safety standards, uh, something called hazard, uh, as hazard analysis critical control point. And for all food science students, let me just reiterate this if you don't get it when you're studying in the university, uh, you should know HACCP by heart, how to create a HACCP plan, how to identify CCPs, all right? Uh, this is very jargon for all of food science students, but you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know how to do it, please learn while you're still in university because when you step out into the industry, this is one of the assessment that they will throw at you uh, on the spot uh, uh, to just see how good is your technical capabilities, at least at the fundamental level, right? So these are the things that I want to emphasize to all of you, because I know a lot of career coaches, a lot of career talks, a lot of uh, external speakers that come to your university, or even when you go for career fair, there's this whole focus and emphasize to say that the very reason why you're not getting your job is because of your soft skill that is not strong enough you know you don't present well you don't talk enough your english proficiency is bad and so on and so forth which are all valid points and you need to work on those but more importantly i can say if you are a computer science student and you don't know how to do simple programming if you're an accounting student and you cannot do basic set of accounts if you are an engineering student and you cannot draw AutoCAD drawings, then no matter how good your soft skill is, 
you can no you can cannot uh, you cannot work in this particular professional fields of course having good soft skills uh, enables you to pursue other industries or other careers uh, for instance uh, sales and marketing probably but even in a marketing field i feel today uh, if you want to be in a marketing field you must have some exposure of what marketing plans are marketing campaigns are and you cannot walk in a job to say i'm really fresh i know nothing but i'm willing to learn right that willing to learn is very important but given today's context you must have some prior experience or prior exposure which is also critical so with that uh, i leave you with this final advice i really hope all of you to uh, work harder uh, to really brush up on your key technical skills fundamental that is needed for you to ensure that at least you will get the job right so with that all the best see you some other time okay thank you